Hello everybody, welcome back. Hope you had a nice restful Easter break and are looking forward to getting back to some work. Today is a really important lesson for your photography because you're starting a brand new project so we really need to get this stage of the project right. As you can see, to help you with this, I've provided you with a video lesson. Depending on how well this goes will depend on whether we do this in the future so this will be a bit of a tester lesson. This will let you go back and forward to replay elements. This should let you go back to revise areas if you get a little bit behind, but you won't feel like you're holding up a group. So what's the point of today's lesson and what are our objectives? Well, our key objectives are simply to pick a new project. You need to be able to look at all the different options, look at all the different possibilities you have and be able to make a decision on which project you want to do. As always with our projects, you can pretty much take it in any direction. It's really, really broad. And so it's really, really important that you make the right choice at this stage because there, with there being a lot of different choice, there's also a lot of ways you could do this incorrectly. So to help you make this decision, you need to think of three key things. One, what different things could you do for the project and what would be a good individual and innovative project idea? Two, what do you actually enjoy doing and what have you wanted the chance to do throughout this time? Because it's your last project, so you really want to do something you enjoy. And three, what are you actually good at? What have you done well previously in the project? Because what you don't want to do is start this project focusing on something that you really, really, really struggle with. You want to feel confident, you want to feel really able, and you want to go in a direction that you know you're going to enjoy doing. So yeah, it's linked to your own interests, but it really does require you to have a little bit of a look at what you were successful with on your previous projects, because this is what you now want to refine and develop in this project. As you can see for this project, the title is Advertising, Consumerism and the Digital World. This doesn't mean you just have to do a project on just advertising. So we're not doing a project where you solely have to think, I need to produce advertising work for a client on packaging or something to do with advertising products. It can be an artistic project in reflection about the media and what it does to us but it's just a nice project title that will let us start to talk about this subject so to start sir what i want you to do is the task indicated in the slide so i want you to do a mind map just a simple five minute mind map to do with the project title okay put advertising at the center of the mind map and start to think of all the different things that are involved to do with advertising or the media or consumerism. So I want you to just write down as many different avenues that come out of that and think about all the different things that are involved. And remember, as indicated, I want you to do this for at least five minutes. Really try to go to town on this because you're gonna be able to use this in your project that you're going to make. Okay, so really think of lots of different areas and just to get you started, think that this could mean fashion, it could mean imagery, it could do to do be to do with the news. Think of all the different areas that um, are to do with advertising and subject use and image use that are in our world. Please pause the video at this point to give you the time to complete this task. Thank you for completing that spider diagram. That should really help you with this next stage, uh, which is about picking your project. As we've mentioned earlier, there's gonna be a load of different ways you can take this project, and we're not gonna be able to mention them all today. And it's important to understand that you have autonomy over this project. You can direct this where you want to go. You can start to really personalize this and make it how you want. But it's also important that from our point of view, we provide examples and that we can support you in possible directions to make sure that nobody is left behind and that you all progress at a really good rate. 
So to help you with this, what we've got is six different possible directions that you can take your project. We're going to have some images to do with each of these projects to get, just give you a bit of an idea of what kind of thing that would look like. And um, we're just going to go over them a little bit just to help you get your ideas flowing. Again, it's important to remember that you direct this project. Each of these individual six projects could have loads of different ways of specializing them and taking them in a direction. For example, if you're going to be looking at TV, you could look at trying to actually create moving TV photography or moving TV imagery. You could do a, pro a fine art project looking about how the TV is evil or how advertising on the TV is changing our perception of things. You could even look about how doing a photography project about how people are obsessed with TV and really, really focus on it and do a load of pictures of people kind of really just losing themselves whilst watching digital media. So you can see that when we're looking at these projects, it's not about saying your project is about TV or fashion or product. It's just about saying these are different kind of areas you can look at and you have to decide what individual things in those projects you will start to focus your project on. We're now going to do a quick overview of these six different areas that we are suggesting. And just remember that when we're doing this, you can go back to these areas and you can go back to these parts of the videos and look at some of the images and the kind of thing that we you could do for them, just to give you a little bit of an idea in the future picking of your project. So fashion. This is a good opportunity for those of you who want to take pictures of people, who want to take pictures of faces and maybe do a lot of studio work. It obviously doesn't mean you need to just shoot in the studio, but the studio is there and it's a good controllable environment for you to use. You can take your fashion project in lots of different ways. You could look at urban fashion, high fashion. You could just look at more makeup and advertising of products. You don't have to look at purely kind of like just taking pictures of faces. You could do the whole figure. You could take it any way you want. And finally, remember that it doesn't just need to be an advertising project. It doesn't just need to be I'm going to literally produce advertisements. It could be a comment on the fashion industry and what you think about this, good or bad. Okay, product photography. This is a really good opportunity and a good project for those people who just want to be really, really controlled as it's something that you can really control every single aspect. You're not gonna have to wait for the perfect lighting situations outside. You're not gonna need to wait for the perfect situation to crop up with somebody walking into your scene. You can control every single part of this. However, the direction you take this project in needs to be something, again, that's possible for you to do. You want to use products and look at the actual advertising that you can obtain items for. For example, you might want to look at stationery or fruit and veg, stuff like that, but not something where it's going to be really, really hard to get the objects for. For example, you might want not want to look at doing really, really high fashion items if you don't have many of those at home. You might not want to look at American bakery items, for example. Not that you'd look at that, but it's just an example that those things would be really, really hard to get hold of. So you want to make sure you use this project to look at something that you can get easily hold of. So for news and current affairs, this can be a project that's a little bit more artistic, something where you might try and show your opinion more or try and do a project that sends a message. Don't forget, this is often really good for the examiner. They like to see that you're using a project to try and discuss an issue. You could maybe talk about how the media impacts how we think. You might want to try and show how the way the media is shown blinds how we think about certain issues. You might try and talk about freedom of speech. It might be a project just about eating in our society and how advertising can change our eating habits. You might try and do a project on text and the spoken word and to actually try and look at the more written kind of media and advertising that is out there. This will give you the opportunity to add text more into your project and use this with within your photos. If you have a look at the actual examples on the screen, you can see there's lots of clever ways that these have been melded with imagery. 
And finally, you might base your project around producing posters that are advertising or showing a specific thing. This may cross over with a load of the other projects. You know, you may include a little bit of what's in those other suggestions in this, but this is just a bit more of a focus on, I'm gonna try and produce a poster form of work. You could do this in fashion, you could do this for objects, but it's more about that specific graphic design based way of taking your project. Good for those people who really like Photoshop editing. And of course, for film and TV, you can take this in a whole multitude of different directions. You could comment on the state of film, you could comment on how violent it is now and how the actual standards of it has changed. You could talk about how the film set is almost photography and start to produce photography that's like a film set. Or you could try and produce film and movie posters and try and do photography that's based purely for advertising film. Okay, now for your task. What I want you to do now is I want you to spend at least a decent 10 minutes on this, but please do spend more time if you need to. What I want you to do is I want you to put on a piece of paper each of those headings. And next to those headings, what I want you to do is I want you to produce a possible project that you could do to do with that title. You can obviously produce more or if it's a title that you really, really like, but try and produce one for each just to try and again get the ideas flowing. When completing this task, do remember that creating a project title or a project theme is about creating a title that is expressing something you want to achieve. Don't just put TV, don't just put advertising, or even if you're kind of trying to be more specific, just putting food is not enough. You need to say what you're trying to achieve. So this needs to be a proper sentence. This needs to be a full project idea where you state what you're gonna try and produce, what kind of photography you're gonna try and do and what that photography is going to try to achieve. An example of this is if you were gonna take food, you wouldn't obviously just put food, as mentioned earlier, but you also wouldn't just put, I want to produce food advertising, because you need to be more specific. You could put, I want to try and produce food advertising that makes the food look really fresh and look really, really healthy. And you might focus on doing vegetables or fruit and veg. Or you might go, I want to try and do advertising that makes junk food look really, really poppy and really, really exciting. Because specifying your title in this way will change the type of photography you do and it will make it so it's a more direct project. If you need help in how to write your sentence, just look in the files tab in your assignment section and it will have a sheet there on how to write a sentence or how to write a project title. Could you now pause this section just so you can complete this task? The first task I want you to do is to produce a new PowerPoint. You're gonna to need to do this new PowerPoint. You're gonna to need to get started. And on your return, we really want to make sure we've got as much produced and as much to get us started as possible. This is exactly what you would be doing at school. And it's really, really important that you get completed at home. You need to produce a mood board and a spider diagram and a title page. The title page just simply needs to have a title and your name. You've done this already, so you should know how to do it. You've done it on previous projects. Just try and make sure it looks exciting. Like it says in this slide, you've got Photoshop skills now. So you should be able to make sure that you use a variety of different methods to make this look really interesting. You obviously by this point will have needed to pick your project. So spend time making sure that this is really what you want to do. When you've picked your project, you're gonna to need to produce a spider diagram. You should have done this partly already, or at least have some information. So put this spider diagram into PowerPoint form, and again, make it look really, really nice. 
Then what I want you to do is produce your mood board. Now remember, these are really important. These really will help you in your project. For this mood board, you need to put on a load of different imagery, photography imagery, of the type that you want your project to look like. So you really want to put in there the type of work that you're gonna to want to produce or stuff that will help inspire you throughout your project. It's useful because it will keep you on message, it will keep you on your project theme and you can return to it to get inspiration. As well as this, what I'd advise at this point is if you put down any artist work or artist photography, then put their name down with it because then it's an easy place to get an artist for the future. And the final thing I want you to do is I want you to move on to the homework, which I know you're doing at home anyway, but this is what we would have set at the time. It's a project planning document that will be really useful because it has all the stuff we would have been doing or we plan to do throughout the project. We still plan to do this. We might make a few tweaks if you're still at home, but this is essentially the project and how it will look, which artists will look at, which photographers would look at, and what order we're going to be doing it in. What I want you to do is I want you to get that sheet and I want you to fill in every single area and just try and just initially pick which ones you would want to do and which ones relate to your project. If there's certain ones that don't relate to your project, then you could put in alternative artists or put in different suggestions if you want to. Remember that you are in charge of this project. So I want you to fill in that sheet and really get to know how which things you're going to pick for your project and whether this is all going to go. The main point of this is more to make sure that everything you're going to pick does link to your project theme. So you don't get a little bit kind of sidelined by going off in a direction that looks interesting but isn't completely to do with your project. So a little bit of this early planning and early thinking about it will really help us in the long run. When you've completed these tasks, please then save these. Okay, you should have your PowerPoint saved and you should have your advertising, consumers and digital media homework saved as a Word document. And both of these need to be uploaded in the assignment tab. And please do this because it's so much easier for me to mark. To do this, go to your assignment tab. You'll need to hand in your assignment and you'll need to attach both of those documents when I see them both, I can give you feedback and see how you've done. And I'll give everybody feedback after the assignment has been done. Um, I hope this has been useful. Um, if it's worked, then we'll do it again. Hopefully, we're not going to be off too much longer and I'll get to see you all soon. Um, and again, if you need any help at all, just don't hesitate to contact me. You can either email me or contact me through Teams. Anyways, good luck with this project and all the best.